Well, my name is Kelly Welsh. I'm a renal dietitian and PKD patient myself. Yeah, so I'm Dr. Jacob Torres. I'm a researcher at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and work in the Wines Lab. I'm currently also the Renew Program Coordinator, so work geez, every day with all types of PKD patients. I'm also a researcher for Santa Barbara Nutrients. You know, you might be familiar with us. <laughs> you know, our lab helped design the Renew Program yeah. based off of the research I've done in the lab over the about 13 years now. So uh, I've been doing PKD all that entire time. Uh, we're doing research on it, and yeah, hopefully I can answer some questions today that are, everyone wants to know about. So one of the things people always say is, my doctor told me I need to drink a ton of water. Or my dietitian, you know, we tell them sort of blanketly as long as, you know, they're not retaining water and things like that. Try to get in like 80 to 100 ounces a day. What? Why do we push that? Why do physicians push the water intake? So I was interested in this because I had to go review this topic again because I know some of the reasons why. And I was kind of interested in like what the original reasons why. Because it's been around for some time now, and this is what led to the discovery of tolvaptin, or like the use of tolvaptin as a therapeutic. Uh, so vasopressin is part of the system of diluting urine, and in PKD, there's a defect in the water retention and water excretion, and so it, there's no effect on concentration, but there's an effect on like the amount of fluid that's being retained and excreted. And so that's one of the reasons why. So there's just this vasopressin system that's in place to dilute the urine. It's the anti-diuretic hormone. So it's to keep you holding on to water. It's overactive in PKD, so there's more of it. And so there's a tendency for there to be another pathway that's activated that is um, involved in something called cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP does a lot of different things. It's called a secondary messenger. And with this thing, it activates a number of other pathways in the cell. And many of those lead to cyst formation if they're overactivated. It's been shown that just by activating cyclic AMP on its own is sufficient to cause cyst formation in the context of PC1 loss. So that was a known factor and if you can increase the fluid intake, then you can decrease the amount of vasopressin that's being released, and then you can drive down that activation of cyclic AMP. So I think that's part of the reason why. The other reason is that there's this tendency to form microcrystals or, or kidney stones as well, and diluted urine is a way to prevent that. And so that's another reason why to prescribe extra water. That has been a common prescription for kidney stone formers for a long time before that. And so I think it was natural to kind of apply that to PKD as well. I think even before they were looking at it mechanistically with vasopressin. Right. That might be one of the hardest dietary modifications for some people that aren't used to drinking water that we find. I think a lot of times patients think they are drinking enough water. And then they start to really measure out even 60 ounces of water, which was sort of the old school way yeah. of thinking, you know, eight, eight ounce glasses a day. And they're shooting for 80 at first. Interesting thing is by the time they start making the lifestyle changes, it becomes habit and they realize, well, okay, this isn't, this isn't so bad. But It's a good um, amount of water. A hundred ounces, you're saying you're using a hundred ounces of water? Yeah, we say 80 to 100 is what we normally recommend. You know, obviously, if they're on Janarku, uh, Tolvaptin, they have absolutely no problem getting in that amount of water. But starting with 80 ounces or so, it's, it's, it's a feat. But obviously, what happens, too, is by trying to shoot for that amount of water, they're cutting out the other things in their life that they were drinking instead. So, so much diet soda or, or things like that. Yeah, but, diet soda is probably not the, the best thing for kidneys in general. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So I got my conversion. It, you said 80 to 100. That's about three liters. Yeah. Is that right? About three liters. Yes, is what we shoot for as like an optimal goal. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I have to always go to metric before I can do the... Before you the, can do the conversion. Think about it yes, for a while. Yes. Like I said, people on Tolvaptin, that's like a drop in the bucket for them sometimes. I'm amazed at how much water people can take in on, on that. <laughs>